People are starting to be nicer to me. What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Another video where I'm going to sit and talk and share about stuff that nobody really asked for, but I feel like talking about. I dressed up my Alani for you today. I've got hair everywhere, which is going to be a topic that we discussed today. I'm shedding everywhere. That was a good crack. Mm, do I like having this on there? My lip kind of touches. Over the past couple months, you guys have asked me so many different questions about my weight loss journey, about being on Zepbound, the pros, the cons. I've never properly sat down and just filmed a Q&A regarding this topic. Conveniently, I also haven't sat down and filmed my makeup routine that I do once a week, but I still consider it a routine because this is what I do every day we film the podcast. Every once in a while, I guess I wear makeup outside of that, but for the most part, <coughs> For the most part, I don't. But I will usually always have mascara and my eyebrows gelled down. That just makes me feel human. My mirror today is going to be photo booth on my iMac behind me and this tiny little makeup palette mirror. I ordered a skinny vanity mirror. She just hasn't come yet because I ordered it 30 minutes ago. I told you guys that I got a new desk in my vlog from last week or two weeks ago. It came this morning at 7.50 a.m. It's a Saturday. They're lucky I couldn't sleep last night or I would not have been up and awake to accept the delivery because I think I had scheduled it between 10 and 12. While I do my makeup, I'm gonna answer the questions that you guys left on my Instagram. And I also went ahead and made a list on my phone of all of the positive things that I've noticed since losing weight and the negative things that I've noticed since losing weight. The list of positives is much longer than my tiny list of negatives, but I still wanna be honest and share the negatives because life isn't always rainbows and sunshine. But you knew that already. Starting with a primer. To this day, I do not know if primers make any difference in your makeup. I made myself do skincare. I don't know how people consistently remember to do skincare every morning and every night. I'm lucky if I do one or the other. I've noticed if I do skin prep, my makeup looks better. Probably just because my skin is moisturized and not the Sahara. Even though I can't prove that primer works, I still use it because I love the placebo effect. Let's get into the positive things that I've noticed since losing weight. I'm gonna share my starting weight with you. I have shared it in a vlog, I think. This is a judgment-free zone. If you're here to be a weenie, go be a weenie in someone else's sandwich. I don't know how much sense that made. The number doesn't matter, but I just feel like it's a good reference. This is explaining where I started to how I got here. I started at 304 pounds. That's the highest weight I saw on a scale. I think at one point I weighed more than that, but I was just not weighing myself. When I was finally able to get myself to step on a scale because I was avoiding it, avoiding it at all costs. I had already been eating healthy for like a week, maybe. So I, I definitely, well, eating healthy. I was trying to lose weight for maybe a week. I'll explain my story with weight a little bit at some point in this, but my highest weight ever was 311 pounds, I believe, maybe 315 a couple years ago. Right now, as I'm sitting here, I am 240 pounds. I've lost a little over 60 pounds since the middle of November of last year. So much of my life has changed since then. I'm grabbing a little bit of a darker concealer because that one was really light. I don't know why I don't just use foundation. When I started this, I was a size 22, maybe even pushing 24 and like women's vanity sizing. Who knows what size you are. And right now I am a size 16, 18 still in some things, but well, I'm at that point where when I put a 16 on, it's really tight and snug. But if I'm able to wear it for an hour, it fits perfectly. My 18s fit really good when I first put them on, but then after an hour, they're too big. Maybe I should say I'm in between a 16 and 18. I'm not a true 16 yet. I haven't been a size 16 in clothes since high school. And I know that the number doesn't matter. But I've gotten a lot of questions asking why I started this journey and what was different this time for me to be willing to get medical help. I've already said this briefly, so I'm not gonna sit and make it long-winded, but <laughs> I'm using this liquid bronzer from Tarte. Can you hear that? Andrew is going to town blowing his nose. When I turned 25, for some reason, the rest of my life was put into perspective. I realized if I wanted to have a kid, 
I couldn't right now. Not that I'm trying to have a baby, I'm not. It's the concept of I am not in a place where if I wanted to start a family, I could. I was starting to notice so many things about my health that getting older, my weight was catching up to my body. I feel like when I was younger, I didn't notice the effects of being that heavy on my body yet. My body was just young and it was able to handle it. In a sense, I started to notice so many little changes in the way that I felt. Walking around, I felt like I was suffocating in my body. I don't know how to explain to you how uncomfortable I was every day. I had no energy. I was being so mean to myself because of how I was treating my body. Oh, that was... May as well be concealer. I love Andrew, but... Does he have to blow dry his butthole? I think the initial question I was trying to answer is what made me start, like what made me get help. I noticed the effects of my body. I turned 25, I realized, hey, I don't want to live my whole 20s like this and I've tried to do it on my own. I had heard about people getting help with GLP-1, but I did not know much about them or what they were or what they could do. I just started looking into it. I went to my primary care doctor. We ran my blood, which came back really sketchy. Uh, pre-diabetic actually seeing that was it for me I don't want to lie and say I wasn't mean to myself because I was I was really disappointed in myself the last time I had weighed myself before the end of October was in August for the most part I would sit weight wise around 280 which was is still very big for my frame even though all of you think i'm very tall i am 5'1 i have to i reiterate it so much you probably are tired of hearing it but every time someone meets me they always say they think i was gonna be 5'8 this is a lot of powder samantha that's just where my body sat whenever i wasn't in a spell of binging a lot i would sit around 280 that's where i was at at the end of august i don't know what triggered such a bad episode of binging but, oh, why did I put that there? Here. Um, oh, it lasted three months. By the end of October, I had gained, what, 30 pounds? 30 pounds in two months is crazy. It was 100% because I was binging all the time. I really have tried to determine the cause and I haven't been able to figure it out. I probably never will. Let's just say I didn't feel good and I wanted help, so I went to the doctor and I got help. That's another question I have been seeing people ask a lot is people are asking me how, that is too fluffy. People are asking me a lot like how can they ask for this medicine or get put on this medicine. Um, my recommendation to you is just to go to your primary care doctor. Oh, have I even said, in case some of you guys don't know me that are watching this. Hi, my name is Samantha Joe, and I have lost 60 pounds since November on a medication called Zepbound or Manjaro. I guess that's really it. It's not that complicated. I really wish this medication was more accessible. I was very open about starting Manjaro when I did. Now it's Zepbound and people are confused about that. Zepbound and Manjaro are essentially the exact same thing, except Zepbound is for weight loss and Manjaro is for diabetics so you have to have diabetes to get Manjaro. You don't have to have diabetes to get Zepbound. They do that that way the medication is there for the diabetics and the people that also want to use it to lose weight. So I switched to Zepbound in January but I've actually had kind of I've I've been on I've been on it honestly on and off because there's shortages and it's kind of, it can be really hard to get. Powder bronzer. Obviously I've had people come to me and warn me about all the side effects that can come with these medications and I'm very much aware of the risks of taking this medication. I have decided for myself that those risks are worth it because what I think some people forget about is there are also a lot of side effects and things that can happen to you, very bad things, when you're obese. That's something I've never lied to myself about or made myself, I don't know, I guess I've never been delusional about the fact that I could quite literally die because I'm obese. Whenever I've said that to people in real life, like just being really freaking honest, I've always been good at being honest to myself, but I haven't always been good at listening to myself. What was I saying? I, I want my ADHD meds so bad. When I say that to people in real life, their response is always, always. Oh my gosh, you're not obese. Like, uh, girl, you are not obese. Let's be fucking for real. Insert picture. I'm not hating on myself in this picture. I don't think I'm any less beautiful in this picture. I mean, it is not the best picture of me, but this girl is just as beautiful, but she is obese. Now I am still obese sitting here. 
technically. Okay. Maybe I'm a little less obese, but I've never lied to myself about that. And I think people think it's a touchy subject. And for some people, maybe it is, but for me, it's not. Like now I do have reverse body dysmorphia. So when I see videos and pictures of myself from a couple months ago, like 60 pounds ago, I had no idea I looked like that. Like genuinely, the person I saw in the mirror is the same person I see in the mirror right now. Like I did not think I was that big. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being big. I am going to go through and explain my symptoms, how I was feeling, because I just didn't feel healthy. I felt really gross. I could feel my body all the time. I felt like it was caving in on me. I hated existing in my own skin, not because I thought I was ugly, but like just physically, it was uncomfortable. Never enough blush. There are risks to being overweight the same way there's risk to taking medicine. You just need to go to your doctor, talk to them about that, decide for yourself what is the best decision for you. This is the decision I came to for myself and I do not regret it one tiny little bit. I'm someone who hates having to admit that they need help. It took me forever to start seeing a therapist. It took me even longer to go to a psychiatrist same thing with my health. I also just get scared going to doctor's offices because sometimes they just blame everything on your weight. And while I understand it is your job as a doctor to tell me that my weight could hurt me and like will hurt me if I don't do something about it. And I am open to hearing that as long as you also listen to what I'm telling you right now. Like my arm is broken. Could we also treat my broken arm? Like my arm isn't broken because I'm fat. My arm is broken because it got ran over by a car. You get what I'm saying? That energy has kept me from going to the doctor, just being afraid to go. It wasn't fun. It was scary and it has not been fun. I think people on these medicines kind of make it look super easy and then it just immediately fixes everything. It is a great tool and it has helped a lot, but I think it is just that, a tool. Um, it also affects everybody differently. So like my mom is also taking it um, because she was, she actually got diagnosed as diabetic. With my mom, it makes her completely not hungry like ever. And I don't have a lot of appetite suppression with the medicine. It just helps, it helps my cravings a lot. So I'm able to choose healthier foods. I'm also able to eat smaller portions. Anyways, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. That was a lot of random information. I need to get a full size of this. They gave us a full size of this Shape Tape Stay Spray in Bora Bora. I think my mom stole it. Okay, this first thing that I'm gonna say is kind of random. I'm not done with my makeup. I'm just letting this completely dry first. Last week, me and Andrew did a kind of impromptu meetup with Tarte. The kindness store came to Tampa and they asked me to go. Me and Andrew ended up meeting hundreds of you guys, like hundreds. We stood there for six hours. But on that day, I wore these sandals that even in Bora Bora, I wore. Well, I wore them once and they're the worst sandals ever. I got them on clearance right before we left. They are strappy Steve Madden sandals. My lips are so dry. When I was in Bora Bora, I needed my mom's help to put them on. I just have never really been in years and years since I was in high school, been able to like reach that area, like comfortably get my arm around over my belly. I've always had a big belly, which has hindered me so much. I knew that my belly hindered me, but I didn't realize how much until it has gotten smaller. In Bora Bora, I think I was in the 260s maybe. It was about a month ago. I went to put them on for the Tarte event and I was able to put them on so easily. I guess I'm able to strap my own sandals easily now, which like I said, this is a judgment-free zone. That might sound silly. I had no idea all these little things were going to improve and I maybe would have done it sooner had I known. Back to the reverse body dysmorphia thing for just one second. I feel like a part of it also was anytime I post something, I would get so many comments from people telling me that I looked smaller, that I looked so good, that I was glowing, that I looked healthier. I mean, 90% of the time I probably had gained weight, not lost weight. A small part of me thinks, not that that's not y'all's fault by any means, but that definitely I think kept me in a space where in my head, I looked so much smaller and healthier than I actually did. Okay, we gotta gel these brows down. I feel like I gotta keep reiterating that nothing that I'm saying is me saying that I wasn't beautiful, that I was worth any less before. I don't know, just me being honest with myself about physical things. 
works. I think one of the most beautiful and kind things I have done for myself in the past five months is be honest with myself. Your beauty and your weight are not linked together, but your health is. I feel as though I don't agree with people who comment on plus size creators content saying that they glorify obesity. My existence does not glorify obesity. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. I've also said this. I don't fit in with the body positivity community in certain ways because I know that how I got to this state, I mean, yes, still this state, but also 60 pounds ago state, wasn't because of a health condition. Yes, I do have PCOS, which makes losing weight more difficult and can make you gain weight. I also have binge eating disorder. All I'm saying is I can't speak for anybody but myself, so I can't come on here and say, my body has been healthy, you can be healthy if you're treating your body just like I was because I know that's not the case. And I'm going to be honest about that and upfront with that because I think that is going to do you more good than me lying. I never had gotten to a point where I couldn't wipe my own butt. Let me just, oh, I should put this on first. Let me just clarify that. But it definitely wasn't easy. Like sometimes if a stall was real skinny, I would struggle to get the back crack, if you know what I mean. Um, Do you have something that can just like smooth out my skin a little? If I had an itch on my back, I would either have to use the wall or Gerald. Couldn't reach it myself. And that also goes for washing. Myself in the shower has gotten so much easier. I did my everything shave a little bit ago. It was so easy. And to be honest, I had kind of stopped shaving as much and like grooming my entire body as much just because it was a task. It was an event and it still is, but just in a much different way. I have access to so much more of my body. I'm almost to the, I can cross my legs almost comfortably. This is so dirty. The next thing is being outside in the heat. We went to Disney and honestly it wasn't that hot, but even when I was in Bora Bora, yes, it's hot, but I wasn't sweating nearly as much. Last summer, I sweat so bad, chafing so bad. And now, I still chafe because I got big old thighs, but I can be outside and it's so much more comfortable. With that, I get cold way easier. I'm not sure exactly how that's from my weight. I mean, it has to be from my weight loss. That's the only thing that's changed or the medication or something. This is a big, big, big one. I don't sit and think about food 24 seven anymore. Two seconds, I wanna mention this is brown mascara. I switched to brown mascara and I have never looked back. For my entire adult life and maybe a chunk of my teen years, my world has revolved around food. I used to think it was a primal thing. Obviously, yes, I still think about food sometimes. That's normal. When you're hungry, you're gonna think about food, but I woke up, thought about food. As I was thinking about my breakfast, I was thinking about my lunch and my dinner, and every moment of the day was taken up by food, and that was something I thought everybody dealt with and had. I just thought other people were better at controlling it than me. I had no idea how quiet your mind could be without the food noise. That's one of the biggest things this medicine has fixed for me and has freed me from is food noise. I don't remember who I heard call it food noise for the very first time, but it just, it made me feel so heard and validated to know that other people struggle with this. I have had days and moments where the food noise has come back. It's not just a switch that you flip and everything is perfect and better. Like this medicine is not a magic fix all. It's a tool, like I said earlier. I've been in therapy. I've been seeing a psychiatrist. I'm trying to heal the things from my past, the trauma from my childhood, like trying to figure out where, like trying to figure out how deep this disorder goes and figuring out at what point did I start coping with food and then it developed into my binge eating disorder. Because I know I can't be on this medicine for forever and I want to I wanna make sure I'm set up for success once I'm not on the medication. I've gotten asked that a lot, like what are you gonna do when you're not on it? I'm really focusing on healing my relationship with food and just healing my brain and my mind. And that's been so much easier since not having the food noise. My Vyvanse, my ADHD medication really helps with that too. My advice if you're on this medicine is don't just treat the medicine as the fix all because then when you're not on it, you might gain the weight back. You might fall back into your old habits. I. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I've picked up quite a few new hobbies. I guess I'm kind of using them as new coping mechanisms in a way. As humans, we're never gonna be able to fully hide from our emotions. That's one of the things that make us human is we have big feelings and there are really sad things that are gonna happen to us. There are really happy things that are gonna happen to us. In our lives, we're going to experience such big emotions and we all deal with that in different ways. And I can't have mine be food anymore. I mean. 
my food addiction had also gotten to a point where I wasn't just binging when I was having feelings. I was just binging habitually almost. I have filled the void that I had been filling with food for years with new hobbies. I love to crochet now. I build Legos. I know I bring that up in every video, but it has truly changed my life. If you ask me what the number one positive thing is that has changed since losing weight, that would be my answer. I got asked this question a lot if I'm following any certain diet and I am not. This medicine is helping me learn how to intuitively eat because I've always known that I'm not gonna be someone who can follow a diet for the rest of my life. Like that isn't realistic. I want to get to a point where I wanna make healthier choices but I don't feel guilty wanting pizza. Like I don't feel guilty eating in quotes bad foods because I'm eating them in moderation. That's not my diet 24 seven. Cooking at home has helped a lot with that because I can see the ingredients that are going in to my food and having someone to cook for has also helped. Uh, I wrote this down because my mind is all over the place and you can't tell. I feel like I'm able to eat what I want and not obsess over food and my next meal. And I'm able to stop eating when I'm full and not eat to the point where I feel physically sick. I've been able to listen to my hunger cues or hunger receptors or full receptors. I don't know. I'm trying to sound smart. I'm able to tell when my body is full and listen to that. I feel like I'm in control now and the food isn't and I have not felt that way in so long a couple of quick ones because I know this video is really long I have not had a single migraine knock on wood overall I just have way more energy I don't crash before I would get headaches every time I would eat I would crash severely which being pre-diabetic that was probably my blood sugar for the most part I have way more stable energy throughout the day now regular periods I did have one period that lasted for three weeks for some reason and I got kind of spooks because a few years ago I had my period for six months once but one of the main reasons I wanted to lose weight was because of my PCOS if I see myself starting a family in the next couple years well in a couple of years <laughs> um I want my body to be in a place that it can have a baby my periods have become much 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 more regular almost to the date which I have not had since high school along with my periods being more consistent my cramps have gotten worse I feel like my uterus is just working better and she's really shedding it out or there's something wrong but I do see a gynecologist. Another little thing that has just brought my mind so much peace for some reason is a lot of weight limits for things like parasailing, skydiving, I wouldn't do either of those, is 250 pounds. Just knowing that there were certain things I couldn't do because of my weight just is not a great feeling. Now that I'm under 250 pounds, like I know the number does not matter, I wanna keep reiterating, but now that I'm under that, I have so much more peace knowing that if someone were to invite me to do something, I could say yes. Also in the car, the seatbelt does not choke me out as much. I only have six negative things written down so far and I do wanna to touch on them before I go. Maybe I'll let you guys ask more questions in this in the comments and I'll combine those two and make another video. The number one negative thing that I am currently experiencing from um, this whole process is my hair falling out. It's called telogen effluvium. Tel telogen effluvium. It's the same reason women lose their hair after giving birth. Your body undergoes a traumatic event giving birth losing a ton of weight. Losing weight being the traumatic event here. Even though it's not maybe traumatic mentally, you're, it, it's traumatic on your body. It doesn't start happening until a few months in. So I would say a couple weeks ago, my hair just started coming out in clumps. My hair has gotten so much thinner. I'm considering getting extensions, but I could also just cut it again. It still looks fine now. I did take the kitchen scissors to it a couple days ago and cut the straggly ends off so it would look a little bit thicker. I don't know, it's just not fun to see your hair everywhere in the shower, have it come off in your hands and your brush. I was really mad at myself because I have tried so hard to make sure I'm getting enough protein in, doing all the things that they tell you to do to avoid this. This has happened to me once before in my life, so I know my hair will grow back. I know it'll stop falling out. I've been on Nutrafol for a month and I have started to supplement with other vitamins. I went in a hole on TikTok trying to figure out what to do. Honestly, you kind of just gotta ride it out, up your protein. This might be surprising that I have it in the negative category, but people are starting to be nicer to me. This is something I have noticed just in the past two weeks, maybe three weeks. I'm getting treated different. 
Some might think that would be something to go in the positive category. I disagree. I don't think we should be treating people differently based on their weight. And to start to see the difference in the way people talk about me, leave comments about me. The next point I have on here is my engagement on Instagram has skyrocketed. I think it just shows that society favors thin people. I know I'm still very much overweight. I feel like I'm slowly inching towards mid-size. The closer I get to that, the difference in how I'm treated is crazy. I also get way less hate comments from men. So many people online have commented that I'm undeserving of love because I'm fat. That it's okay that they comment these things about me and treat me this way and say these awful things because I'm fat and that makes me, I, I don't know a different word other than deserving to be treated like that. Going along with that, brands that have reached out to me, wanting to work with me that either refused to work with me before. <laughs> what do I do? It's the ghost of Christmas past. Hi sisters. Y yes. Victoria's Secret was in my email the other day and something about them that has one always bothered me is they just don't cater to bigger people which is so interesting because so much of the population is plus size you're missing out on such a huge audience and market what recently has been arguing me about victoria's secret pink and just victoria's secret is they have bigger mannequins in their stores but they don't have bigger sizes it just, I get so confused. And so now, and the fact that they're reaching out to work with me now that, like I said, I'm not small. I'm not sitting here being Delulu, but I'm, I'm inching towards mid-size instead of plus size. I don't know why it just makes me angry. And I'm putting it in here as a negative because I wasn't good enough before. Why am I good enough for you now? Okay, this is a very silly one, but doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. It's just more inconvenient, but... I'm having to continually get new clothes. A lot of you guys are telling me to thrift my clothes, which is obviously very smart. That way I only spent a couple dollars on them. It's not a big deal when they don't fit. The issue is, is none of the thrift stores that I have found have a good amount of plus size clothing that doesn't look like it's for your grandma, which is why I have a whole closet full of clothes that don't fit me anymore. All sizes like 20, 22. I'm gonna go through them, donate some to the women's shelter here. I'm gonna try and bring them to a bunch of the thrift stores. I don't need money for them. I just want there to be clothes for plus size people in thrift stores. So if you thrift in Tampa or St. Pete, you might see my clothes. And then the other thing that is negative is some of the side effects that I've had from the medication. I have not had it that bad. I only got really sick that one time in my vlog. I did like a week in my life vlog and I had just upped my dose from 7.5 to 10 and I was down and out for 24 hours. That was the first time that has ever happened. The only side effects I get on the day to day sometimes is acid reflux. As long as I'm drinking enough water, I don't get that that bad. Certain foods will make me nauseous, but I've always had a sensitive stomach. A side effect that I didn't expect was how much of a fat ass I was gonna get. That might be a positive though. Oh yeah, dry mouth. It is, that's actually the worst one right now. It's apparently causing me stinky breath. Gerald humbly told me like three days ago that I went to go cuddle him in the middle of the night and he had to gracefully push me away because I was breathing swamp ass breath on him. I'm trying to handle it. I don't feel like my breath stinks, but maybe it does at night. I don't know if I said anything that I wanted to. I know I didn't answer a single question, but leave any questions you guys have down below if I didn't cover something or you're just curious about something. And I'll just make like one big video of the ones from Instagram and the ones from the comments on this. I just wanna say thank you for all of the support over the past couple months. You guys have been so kind about it. I was like scared to talk about it for a while, but people are gonna have their opinions and I can't change that. I love you. Thanks for hanging out and doing my makeup with me and chatting and listening to my very sidetracked brain. Listen to the podcast. I will see you guys so soon.